You're watching Biz Asia America, your link to Asia and beyond. I'm Michelle McCory, and our focus on Afghanistan continues. And it may not be New York City or Silicon Valley, but the entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well in Kabul. Hundreds of tech and business savvy people are taking risks, and not just for the money, but because they're committed to Afghanistan's economic development. Let's take a look at some of them. Karim Khoja is the country's leading telecommunications executive. After working in Europe and North America, he went back home to help shape Afghanistan's infrastructure. Hasina Sayed is considered one of the country's most diverse entrepreneurs. She runs several companies, including travel, hotel, and construction firms. And Ahmad Reza Zahedi runs a software design company that's worked with news outlets and the U.S. Embassy in Kabul. He's also part of a program that sends Afghan entrepreneurs to the U.S. to get hands-on training. And for a closer look at an Afghan media mogul, let's bring in Sean Caleb's in Kabul. Sean, you're on the ground and you have met some upcoming titans. Yeah, without question. I think if you look at a couple of areas that really are flourishing here, uh, in Afghanistan, you would have to talk about telecommunications and the media. If you walk the streets of Kabul, virtually everyone has a cell phone, they're either talking or texting. As far as TV goes, a number of private stations have cropped up, and while quality may not always match quantity, one station and its owner have really risen above the rest. This is the Afghanistan you know. Dirt poor, steeped in generations old traditions. Eat, eat like that, baby. But Afghanistan also boasts a hyperactive media and an aggressive free press. In this country, king of the media hill is Saad Mosseini, an Afghan born in London who runs the Mobi Group. We've just been facilitating a change that was inevitable. I think in today's day and age, you cannot actually contain these sorts of changes. You know, this is, you know, the globalization of, of, of the world. Afghanistan cannot remain isolated. Mosseini gambled on peace, taking root in Afghanistan, and started Tolo TV not long after the Taliban was driven from the country more than a decade ago. Nearly 60% of the country now has access to Tolo, and it's seen in seven countries. There was no, you know, you know uh, master plan. You know, we just wanted to provide the public with, with what we thought the public would, uh, would need in terms of being, you know, being informed of events, in terms of entertainment, uh, in terms of uh, current affairs programs. Tolo airs 12 to 13 dramas and other programs produced from within. You may recognize some by their more popular cousins produced in the West. By Western standards, they may be a bit cheesy and lack production value. Tolo has a news department with more than 100 journalists. Mosseini says freedom of the press here is much stronger than any other country in the region. Latfala Najafisara is the young man Mosseini trusts to run the news department. Najafisara says Mosseini's legacy can best be told perhaps 30 years from now, but at the moment he has opened the eyes of the country's youth. Giving them hope, giving them energy, and giving them, um, uh, you know, a different lifestyle uh, uh, that they, they never imagined. Mosseini's network has had a significant impact within Afghanistan, creating more than 1,000 jobs and setting the benchmark for TV production here. If he does have a complaint, it is with the international media and the way they cover Afghanistan. I don't understand why the international press is not, not uh, taking note of these huge changes we've seen in this country. A huge decline in infant mortality. A, B, C, D, e, F, G, H, R, G, K, L, M, N, O, P. Ten million students in school now, as opposed to half a million under the Taliban. A tremendous improvement in women's rights issues and exposing Afghans to technology. 20 million here have mobile phones, 6 million access to the internet. But all this could go away if the delicate democracy fails and insurgents rally. But there's always the risk, but you know, I think that the, the paste is out of the tube now. I think it's almost too late to turn things back. They can disrupt, um, you know, they, they, we will have obstacles uh, and, and, you know, we will trip up from time to time. The challenge remains continuing to pick themselves up and moving forward. There has been tremendous growth here in just a short period of time, but here is the sobering news. Foreign aid is drying up, and as we have seen over the past couple of weeks, the security situation still remains brittle here. 
And Michelle, those are going to be two tough hurdles to overcome. Absolutely, Sean, and a very interesting report. Didn't realize they had The Voice, one of my favorite shows in Afghanistan. But like you mentioned, the political situation is rather unstable and the banking sector is very undeveloped. So how is all of this innovation being funded then? Well, it really started, uh, I think, with a lot of international assistance, grants coming from uh, various countries. If you remember back in 2001, this country was basically back in the Stone Age uh, under the Taliban rule. So they wanted to get communication media up and running very fast. Saad Hosseini has a background in banking, and for a couple of years he was a senior economic advisor uh, to the Afghan government. Uh, so he moved in and really uh, saw an opening and jumped on it. And to his credit, it has really taken off. And now uh, that station has become basically the benchmark for TV here. And a lot of other stations sort of cherry pick uh, his employees, take them over to uh, other stations. And so it really kind of uh, fosters a whole network of uh, growth. Right. So still very foreign aid dependent. Now, Sean, given technology is so important to Afghanistan's development, are there any major global tech or communication companies looking to establish a presence there, or are they still very much deterred by the political climate? I think it's the political climate as much as the economic climate as well. Uh, corruption here is just so endemic, and I think this country is looking to its new leader, who hopefully will take office just a couple of weeks after May 15th, uh, to try and find a way to overcome these kind of problems. There are four large telecommunication networks, private, uh, that are up, up and running here. None of them uh, you've probably ever heard before. And there's a one government entity as well. Uh, I, there is a German tech company that has dipped its toe in the water here as well. But so far, none of the big names that you would know off the top of your head have really jumped uh, in here. So uh, certainly people hoping that. It's a very young population here. Two out of three people are under the age of 25. So the potential is here. They just have so much to overcome. Right. All right. Good to see you, Sean. We'll check in again with you tomorrow. Sean Caleb's reporting live from Kabul.